Oh yeah. Hello, this is the Arteria Mini Brute. The Mini Brute is an analog synthesizer from Arteria. Um, you may be familiar with it, it's been out for a while, um, but it's nice to revisit it because it's actually an insanely powerful machine. I don't know if you've had a go with one or if you're familiar with it indeed, but it's an analog synth. Inside this machine is the beating heart of an analog synth. It's not a digital recreation. There's no DSP inside this thing. And Archeria have collaborated with another gentleman from Grenoble in France by the name of Yves Usson. Yves Usson is a synthesizer designer. He has been doing it for a very long time. He has a room filled with synthesizers and is kind of a genius when it comes to analog design. He has a lot of circuit designs that he designed himself or adapted from other people's designs and they have found their way into the Mini Brute. So there's kind of an analog genius behind this thing. So to give you an overview, this is the oscillator section. We have one oscillator, but that is a very misleading thing to say because that one oscillator is in fact very complex. What we do is we blend together multiple wave shapes with this oscillator. It in fact has kind of a bunch of wave shapes and the option of adding more into it live. Um, so this is the saw wave, which if I sweep up the filter, you can hear. Just a fat round saw. However, this is where we discover that each one of the oscillator wave shapes has got a kind of magic trick. It has its own sort of special power. The special power that the saw has is the ability to do this ultra saw thing. So if I go back here. Do you hear that sort of like phasing thing it does? It sounds like lots of phase shifted copies of the main saw being played amongst each other because that's what's happening. And there's a rate control for that phasiness. Super cool. And that rate control is independent of other kind of rate things, LFOs and whatnot that are going on. So it's like its own little LFO. Really, really cool. So we can turn just what is technically one saw into the sound of loads of saws, like a fat kind of ensemble. Ace. So, we then have square. I'll open this up. Fat, round, square. And most squares can do this on good oscillators, um, which is vary the pulse width. That's just literally the sort of width of the square itself. So, um, if we do this. You'll hear it varies. And what's cool is we've got an envelope amount control, so it lets me use the filter envelope here, which I can vary with these little sliders, to change that. Hear how it changes? And that's bi-directional, it can go in both directions. So, um, then we get to the triangle. Now, this one is the most unique, I think. The triangle is very, very unique to the Mini Brute and Micro Brute as well, because I'm not aware of another analog synth kind of keyboard ever that does what this does because this is a wave folder. So a wave folder is a analog circuit that takes a simple wave, like a triangle, and folds it back on itself, literally. It makes a simple shape more complex. And I'll play it to you. <laughs> it has this awesome kind of... vowel sound, 
Wave folding like this is the sort of basis of a lot of um, kind of West Coast synthesizers. West Coast synthesizers, which by which I mean synthesizers that weren't subtractive, that were based not necessarily based around a subtractive architecture. That's kind of the sort of backbone of that style of synthesis. And you've got that in the Mini Brute, but you also have it in combination with a subtractive architecture. So you can sort of use it both ways. But um, yeah, this is ace as well because that metalizer control can be acted on by the envelope as well. Hectic. Now, um, we can also use the LFO, by the way, to modulate these, um, but just good to know that the envelope, filter envelope, can do it as well. So, lastly, actually not lastly at all, um, secondarily to lastly, we have a sub oscillator. So, if I let that play and then You can hear that we have a sub oscillator and there's a few little options. I can have square sub os or sine. And then we can go down one octave, so we'll be playing here, or two. If I come up here. So you can just add low end fatness. Um, it's very kind of 101 that thing. So it's and it reminds me of that in a character in its sort of character, although we get into the filter and that makes this very unique. First though, very quickly we have noise and most awesomely of all, an audio input. Now, why is this exciting? This is exciting because round the back of the Mini Brute is a quarter inch jack input. So if you want to augment the oscillator or if you want to process stuff through the Mini Brute, you can. And there's a neat switch around the back if I flick, we'll just open up the gate of the synth and leave it open. So you can then use this like a filter bank. This is the output of the Braids Macro Oscillator Eurorack module, also from France. And by opening the gate like that, I can just process things. Um, I can just put things through the filter. That could be drum loops, it could be vocals, it could be, you know, guitar gone through a sort of um, amp or something. But if we want to, we just click it to gate. What I've got there is that the control voltage outputs, by the way, there are control voltage ins and outs because this is analog. It interfaces really nicely with analog synths. You can use this as a um, controller keyboard. And what I like most of all is that you can use the audio input to augment the voice. So while it's not a multi-oscillator synth, you can add your other oscillators. And also, if you don't have a Eurorack synth or any other analog gear lying around, that could just be the output of your sound card. Root a really interesting VST or a, the output of a sampler or something like that out through one of your sound card's outputs and then either using the USB ports on here or its MIDI output, it's very easy to link the pitch of that sampler or that VST with the pitch of the Mini Brute. And by playing the keys with that sound feeding in, what you're doing is you're kind of creating a hybrid machine. You're augmenting the sound of the Mini Brute with an external source. Very cool. Right, so we have a filter. And this is not just any filter. This is a Steiner Parker filter. Niall Steiner was a synth designer um, way back when and published a filter design um, in a popular magazine, which a lot of folks have adapted. And it's a beautiful sounding filter, very elegant to make, actually very inexpensive to make. But I really like it. It's got a kind of rude sound and it's very resonant. But what's cool is it doesn't lose bass when you add resonance. So you hear, you can do kind of trad stuff. And if you make it resonant, It sounds excellent. And it's multi-mode. Meaning, I don't just have a low pass, I've got a band pass as well. Band pass. 
I also have high pass. Super aggressive. And then we also have notch. Whoa. So it does self-oscillate if I do that. Very aggressive. But if you back off on the resonance, it can be polite too. It's important to point out that these mixer controls do drive internally. I think there was originally a plan to put a kind of red dot on each one of these. Um, so just be aware that if you want cleaner tones, the trick is don't just stick all the mixer controls up to the top. Another tip, I would say, is it's tempting to just sort of go nuts and just have everything on full and just blend all the oscillator shapes. I feel that you can get kind of fat results often with just well-chosen single tones in kind of moderation. So just think carefully about what you blend together. Sometimes just a few shapes well-chosen can give you a fatter sound. Here we have a control called Brute Factor. Now, Brute Factor is a kind of feedback stage. It's basically feeding back in a loop with the filter. And there's a lot of very, very weird things that start to happen when you use this at high settings. It's important to point out, one of its coolest things is at low settings, it has a kind of aging trick. Do you hear how it kind of sort of rounds out and fattens things up? So you can get this really kind of old vibe. And then at high settings, very weird things start to happen, especially if you have the filter at high resonance. <laughs> so that's brute factor. Um, up here we have just volume controls for the phone output, there's headphones and master volume. You also have a fine tune control, very helpful if you're tuning this thing to something else. Um, then we have our envelope controls, and I really like the slider bass thing. Um, reminds me of a lot of classic synths, it's very kind of 101 in its sort of vibe. Um, and it's just very visual as well, it's really easy to see what the um, envelopes are set to. And there's a rate control, so that we can get kind of a bunch of different rates occurring. We have a fast setting, which allows us to do very clicky things. They're very fast, the envelopes. Obviously, we can slow them up. And if I'm trying to do a sort of pad sound and that fast is too fast, if I hit slow, it sort of extends the rate of these things out massively. So I can then do very slow things. The LFO section is quite straightforward. There's just one LFO here, um, but we can send it to a ton of places. So let's send it to control the metalizer. Um, here, metalizer is just set kind of to zero, so it's just the straight triangle. Very straightforward. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And then what I've got here is there's a couple of ways we can set up this mod wheel. One of which is to just have it controlling the cutoff. If you want lots of control, you prefer doing that to squidging the knob. Um, the other one is that we can control the amount of vibrato. Um, and there's a separate control for vibrato. And then if I set it to LFO amount, now by turning the mod wheel, it will control the amount of this LFO being sent. So if I just get some of this engaged, with this up, it's applying positive amounts of the LFO to these controls. So that starts to work. Really ace. And once again, that can go to multiple places. So to the filter as well, positive and negative. Yay.
Um, that's very excellent. Now, arpeggiator, um, which we can... It's really simple, um, but it really adds to the machine. It's very fun being able to just hold this down. Um, if I get a sort of slightly less kind of bonkers sound going on... You can sync this to MIDI as well. And then we have a bunch of different controls, like we can change the step rate. Because by the way, there's a tempo here. And very neatly, there's tap tempo. So if we're playing along with a band, we can sync it that way if there's no master clock. Good if you want to get your selected ambient works on. Do note that this little switch here lets us sync that LFO to the arpeggiator. So if I go... Now that locks. If I get some modulation occurring, remember I have to do this. That means that this filter modulation is synced to the beat. And then this becomes a divisor, kind of divider control. It stays locked to musical divisions. Now, when you speed up the arpeggiator ridiculously, it gives you a sort of video game sound. <laughs> Lastly, you can hit hold, and then you are free. You are free to fiddle. And there's different modes. Once again, we can sync that to MIDI and USB.
Oh yeah. There is some glide, by the way. <laughs> if that's your bag. It's my bag. We can also determine how far the pitch bend knob goes. But of course it's got these CV inputs, so what I'd like to do is just have a play um, with the BeatStep Pro, taking a cameo here. This is a prototype um, ahead of the main release. and. What's cool about this machine is it's got a ton of CV outputs, so I'm able to sequence analog drums um, and the Mini Brute with just this one machine. So you can kind of get this cool kind of synced hybrid thing. But it's important to point out, whilst I've got all this nice analog gear, the BeatStep Pro works via USB and MIDI as well. So it can sequence computer-based drums. I just happen to have this gear right. Using the Mini Brute as a kind of crazy bass generator being sequenced from the BeatStep Pro. <laughs> no tuned information, this is just filter feedback. And this is a gate sequencer. I can't play, by the way. But even I can have fun with this.
Here we're using the Mini Brute as a CV keyboard, CVing the braids and then feeding it back into the Mini Brute. While I've got this awesome module, once again, remember, this is totally doable with your computer as well. You can use this to send VSTs and um, samplers, any sound source you can possibly generate can be routed through here. And as long as you've got the ability to do it, then you can just send the MIDI from the Mini Brute's keyboard. beautiful and of course it just integrates with the rest of the synth as if my mini brute has now got this as a oscillator built into it and then with this running we can just blend in the mini brute's own waveforms Wicked. That's the Mini Brute. It's Ace.